In this video, Christopher Davis demonstrates how to compute a terrain correction using VPMG and Geoscience Analyst Pro Geophysics. So for the terrain correction, um, we have this topography surface in a, in a TS file. So we can just drag and drop that in. This is what it looks like. Maybe change our vertical exaggeration just a little bit. And when we drop, drag and drop the CSV, We have the gravity data, we have an X, Y, Z, and then we have our data. And we always have a, we always have the ability to, to preview the data to see how we're going. If, uh, if we had a line data, we could also do a curve, but uh, we only have points and that's fine. So there's our elevation. Uh, there's our free air of our, um, there we go. There's our free air. Um, and then we already have a simple boogie that's been uh, that's been calculated. So in this case, uh, we're going to want to see what um, what these mountains do. Oh, ah, yeah. So, whoops. Um, so in our new preferences, we'll also have view. You should also have a viewport direction label. So if you don't like uh, if you don't like uh, X, Y, Z, you can call it Easting, Northing, um, or apparently Taco. Just playing around with that just to see what it was look like. Um, yeah, so there you go. So now you can have Easting, Northing, and, uh, and said instead of, instead of X, Y, Z, if, if you wish. So the first thing we need to do is build a topography model. And so we're going to build a topography model with VPMG. We're going to go to utilities, VP model designer. This is basically the, the main way that we would compute or, or create a model. So I find the easiest thing to do is to select this little button, which is a select objects and, and suggest dimensions. So if I just select my topography, it's going to select it here. Um, and it's a bit odd because it's at the base. So I'm going to do is I'm going to give it my topography. And when I give it my topography, it'll put it at the very top of the topography. This is the this is that 2D grid with the DUDV. And so right now, uh, we have 100 by 100 prism. So if we wanted to change it, uh, we could just do it that way and get 50 by 50. I'm just going to stick with 100 by 100 for now. And then here's that model base. So it gives you the number of prisms. Um, later on, we'll add more surfaces, but if we wanted to add surfaces to do waterfalls, uh, we would uh, we would do that to create different uh, different data. And then we're going to just create an output. And we'll call that terrain. And now I'm just going to create it. And there's there's my VP model. So there's my tightly packed prisms. And I'll just show you um, if I go to visual parameters. And then let's say I unit and I have a VP basement only right now because I only gave it the top. You can see, you can see how um, that has now really tried to drape the topography to the best of its ability. And so this is this is where like being able to do terrain corrections um, comes into play, and and how different it is with UBC, right? So UBC would say, okay, well I have a 25 meter clipping and so that's what it's going to do where this is just uh so if i hit cells i can see a cell here so you know that top of this cells 1952.3 and this is 1950 so there you go so there's my model it goes all the way down to, to 25 kilometers in depth so here we have a filter basement so if i don't filter the basement you see the entire thing. So that's what the entire model looks like, right? And then we have half space everywhere around. So because we don't always want to filter the model, we end up uh, having this little filter basement. Uh, we can always show the, the grid as well. If I open this up, we have the interfaces. Uh, we have a, a property, we have a weight, and then we have a unit. And here the unit doesn't mean too much. But what I'll do is I'll go to data colors, and this is my definition. So if I want to change property to, to something called density, I just double click on or just click on property. 
and I can rename it to density or susceptibility. Um, and in this case, um, I can just say, OK, everywhere in my VP model is just going to be 2.67. And now you can see my density has changed to 2.67 everywhere in my model. So now I'm, I'm actually ready for a forward model uh, to compute the, uh, the train response. Um, yeah, so then what I'll do is I'll go to geophysics and uh, compute forward model. And this is where it's asking you what type of data. So this is the same style of Ford model as we had before when we had a when we had a 3D model, um, a block a block mesh. In this case, our 3D model is the terrain. Our observation points are gravity data, and this is where uh, observation data comes into play. So if I don't give it any observation data, it's going to just give me its Ford model. But in this case, I'm going to give it the free air. And it's going to do that DC optimization between the free air and the terrain. My property is density. I don't have a regional model, so this is where you would incise it, right? And it asks you the incision or the averaging. So it averages the regional model into the basement. The scooping inserts the model into a hole within the regional model. And then the removing, where the regional model completely replaces the model basement. So, so there you kind of have the tool tips and what you need. And then EHS stands for uh, enclosing half space. And so here we're going to specify a value, but we need to have a value. So the easiest thing to do um, is just click on, on the buttons. And in this case, uh, it comes up with the 2.67, which makes sense, right? So everywhere we're going to have a 2.67. Now that the enclosing half space is, at the, is, uh, is flat. So we need to know where we're going to put that enclosing half space. We don't necessarily want to put it at the top of the model because then we're going to have these large cliffs of 2.67 down to where we start the model. So we usually try to find like the, the mean or the average of the of the top of the model of the topography. Um, some people also use the the lowest uh, the lowest point. The half space top um, you would change, but if you wanted to, you could optimize the half space value if you're not quite sure what it should be or or how well. Uh, it should fit. And if you ever have really uh, bad misfits along the the edge of the model, it's usually the half space. So that's a that's a good way. That's a good place to start. And then in this case, I'm going to put terrain. So this is just the terrain response. And so what this will do is it will create a new property on my gravity data called terrain. And I just apply. And there's my forward model. So what this has made is the the terrain forward model, which looks like this. Remember the free air looked like that. And then if I look at the residual, which is the uh, free air uh, minus the terrain, this is what I get now. So this is basically the complete boogie, right? Because I have a 2.67 um, all the way up. And then just out of, uh, and then this is like the the simple that we've already taken. And then there's the complete. So that's the first part of the uh, the terrain correction. It's kind of the simplest part. You can see um, it wouldn't take very long if you had your DEM and your data to just compute it and create it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add um, a layer of till underneath. So to do that, I need to grab my, my bedrock surface. And let me just view this guy. And then let's try this. So this bedrock surface, uh, let me just bump this guy up. There we go. You can see here's our layer of till. In, in the valley here. And then what it does is it actually goes back and, uh, and mimics the topography in, in the mountains here. So this is where we'd have a zero thickness. Um, this is what we we're talking about with zero thickness. So technically in VPMG, we can have a two layer model. We can have our, our bedrock surface, or in this case, we might call it you know our, our overburden or alluvium. And then we would have the RVP basement. And, and 
in this case up here in the mountains, our alluvium would be zero thickness. But then you can see down in the valley, we would have some type of thickness. So we're going to use this to um, we're going to use this guy to create a VP model next. And we're just going to go back to utility and VP model designer. And we'll select this guy, the, the topography again. Set the topography surface and this time, instead of just making a single VP basement model, we're going to select bedrock surface. So we're going to say we're going to go from uh, in the topography down to the bedrock surface and create a unit and then we'll have the rest of our VP basement. And then here we're going to do terrain with the alluvium. And I'm just going to hit create. And so now if I were to look at this uh, this VP model and look at the unit, you can see I now have that layer of alluvium. And I've and I've actually and I've taken out uh, in that um, I didn't talk about it, but there's a keep zero thickness cell. In this case, I just took it out. So everywhere we had zero thickness cells over here in the mountains, it just it just didn't bother keeping it. Um, and now I have uh, I have two units. So I have the basement, and then this one I can just double click and call alluvium. So now that's my that's the name of my my unit. I can give it some property. So something like 1.6, and this is 2.67, call this density. And then if I wanted to add more, so say I wanted to do a, a lower and upper bound, I could, I could add here and do say lower, and that's my lower bound of my, well in this case, my density. So 1.1, 2.17, and I could keep going. I, I'm not gonna, I won't bother keep going for the upper bound um, because I'm just going to forward model it. So then we go back to our forward model and everything is still conveniently there. And we just go to alluvium. And I'm just going to name it uh, terrain with alluvium. And so now our uh, our gravity data has the terrain and then the terrain with alluvium. So let's go back to just this guy. And let me just make these points a bit bigger so we can see. So there's my terrain with alluvium. There's my terrain. So you can see it does slightly change um, as I flip back and forth. And then there's my there's my residual. And this is my residual there. So now I basically have a corrected data set. So, you, so uh, at one point you had asked about uh, how do I do, you know, uh, UBC. So at this point, uh, I could go to my block model designer and start designing, say, a block model based on my points, my points here. I could also take my um, my VP model, and I could create a block model from there. And then it wants to know where my bottom elevation is. So this is what the, the yellow would be. So right now it's 1650. Here I go 1800, which is right there. And then it says, OK, what, what do you want your vertical cell size to be? And right now it's uh, it's 50, and it's telling me how many cells it's going to have. It's going to have half of a half a million, basically. And then you just hit apply, and now I'm creating the um, the block model. So now I have a block model with actually all my stuff I had before on my uh, with my unit. And if I if I view this guy, um, this is a bit odd, but let me go and just view the units. And you can see uh, on 50 meter scale what this would look like. So clearly you wouldn't want to do a terrain correction there because you're going to have, you know, you're going to have a bit of striping here. Um, and that's just because the, the alluvium was, was thinner than, than the 50 meters. But you can see like 
rather than having this style of block model. Um, I guess it's still pretty high to maybe. Instead of having this style of block model, um, you know, having something more like this would make a lot more sense. And there's my actual basement. And that's the that's the terrain correction. And this is just using forward model for VPMG.